welcome to Retro Gaming Dads, the fortnightly podcast for everything retro and retro inspired. In this week's episode, we'll be taking a look at Alex Kidd, the Sega mascot that just couldn't. I'm not familiar with the uh, series myself, particularly, but I know you have played them. So let's go through a quick brief overview and sort of have a look at Alex Kidd's past. Well, Alex Kidd originally was Sega's mascot. As I just mentioned then, he he was the mascot that just just couldn't keep his crown. He wasn't even the first Sega mascot like a lot of people think of. So have you ever played a game called Fancy Zone? It's a little spaceship shoot 'em up. I've never played it, but I I'm pretty sure I've heard of it. One of the first mascots, I don't even think this was Sega's first mascot, was the spaceship from that. So a a spaceship was the mascot called Opa Opa. I'm not really sure about a spaceship being a mascot, if I'm honest. I've got a feeling that it probably wouldn't have worked in like the US and Europe, so perhaps Sega was looking to change it. And they were seeing the success that Nintendo were having with Mario and the Super Mario franchise as well. So they made a, a little character, a little monkey boy sort of character called Alex Kidd. Now... His first title is probably the title he's most well-known for, which is Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Mm. of which we've played through the recent remake of it. Yes, we did. Quite often when we play the remake or speaking about it, you've quite often linked back to, it was like this in the original. Yes. It links back. And I'm glad I didn't play the original because I I would have thrown a control out of the window. (laughs) Well, in all fairness, thinking back to how it was. So like most people, I played the original as it was built into my Sega Master System 2. Okay. So if you didn't put a game in it, you turned it on, up popped Alex Kid in Miracle World. And it was a game that I never actually completed on the Master System. Okay. I played it a lot. Don't get me wrong. I played it a lot. I got good at the first half of the game, but just... <laughs> Couldn't get past that halfway point to ever experience any of the back end of the game. But you thought you were pretty near the end, didn't you? Yeah, originally I thought I I was on maybe the last level or so. But when I played through it on Modern Systems uh, 360, I think it was. Yeah, I I wasn't. You realize how wrong you were. Yeah, I was halfway through. That was it. But this game, it came out in 1986, which makes this game older than you. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes it does um, um, actually I think all of the Alex Kidd games are older than me I think they are I think there might be one <laughs> game that maybe Alex K- Kidd in Shinobi World doesn't have a date in it but uh, the Enchanted Castle was at 89 yeah I think it might have been like early 90s like 91 maybe <laughs> what the heck originally Alex Kidd in Miracle World was apparently going to be a Dragon Ball game Okay. And Sega had the license to it. However, lost the license. So they made it into its own thing, which became the start of the very short lived Alex Kidd series. I mean, if it was going to be a Dragon Ball game as star it is now, I don't really know how that would have really fitted, if I'm honest. I'm not a Dragon Ball fan at all. I've never watched a single episode. But I believe Alex Kidd was originally meant to be like child. Is it Goku? Goku. So I think that's who he was kind yeah. of modelled after. Yeah, it's definitely the most well-known of the titles, and some would argue the best of the titles, although it has got one title that does give it a run for the money. After 1986's release on the Sega Mark III and the Mass System, we got a arcade game with Alex Kidd, and this one actually introduced a new character called Stella that we would never, ever, ever see again. Am I reading this right that that was also released in the same year though? Yes. So released in the that's same year in the arcades. So just an arcade system, does it? Was it not on console at all then? It did come to console later on. Okay. But originally it was released in the arcade. Who's his counterpart that just made a single appearance? It basically it was a female version of Alex Kidd called Stella. Okay. The only other appearance I ever known her to make outside of this game was actually in a game called Altered Beast. You can actually see uh, two graves, one that says Stella and one that says Alex on it. So it may be foreshadowing the rest of the series. But yeah, that's that's the only other time I can ever think that she's been mentioned. 
she's probably in something else. I wouldn't be surprised if she was in something like Sega All Star Racing or something similar to that. But I'm certain she's never been playable in another title. Yeah, but that's pretty morbid, though. <laughs> she went from an arcade game. Well, death. yeah, you know it's bad when even Sega are like foreshadowing the death of the series. And bear in mind that game came out before the series got discontinued. Oh, all right. <laughs> Not a lot of faith in it. It didn't seem so. Alex Kidd in Miracle World is kind of like a platform adventure title, would you say? Yes. Now, Alex Kidd Lost Stars is just a very linear platform game that just hurls absolutely everything at you. It's obvious it's just designed to take your money at the arcade. Oh, so basically you it's designed for you not to win. As most arcade well, games it, are, but this yeah, one really just wants it's to It's definitely kill you. like one of the enemies, it's a dog. That yaps at you. And the actual words coming out of its mouth, if you touch them, you die. If you touch dog, you die. If you fall down the pit, you die. Yeah. If you're not quick <laughs> enough, you die. You die, you, you know, die, you die, die, die. And unlike Alex Kidd in Miracle World, where when you die, it kind of sets you back a little bit, it gives you a bit of invincibility, this just yeah. chucks you straight out to die again. Oh, okay, so as you're respawning, you could be getting killed straight away. Within seconds, yeah. And unfortunately, when it came to the mass system, they did give you a health bar. Okay. It sounds like it makes the game better, but it just makes it worse in a different way. Because in the Mass System version, although you don't die in a single hit, you can just literally push through because your health is the time. So as long as you rush through, you can take quite a few hits. Okay. So you're just tanking it, just trying to rush through it. and e- Exactly. You, know, you could take, I don't know, say four or five hits, but... If you're tying around and getting it right, you could easily get through the game while surviving from taking all those hits. Yeah, as long as you've got the time limit left, because every time you take a hit, it knocks your time limit down, and you okay. die when the time hits zero. Okay. As long as you've got a bit of time left on the clock, you, you can tank it. You don't really need a lot of skill, if any. That sounds horrible. Oh, uh, one thing as well. It's got digitized voicing, which was great for the time, but it's this horrible little, Wah! every time he dies. It's a horrible noise. Horrible, horrible noise. <laughs> Does it bring about memories now? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. You're going to have to put it in the uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. so people can hear the noise now. Yeah, it, it'll haunt their dreams. <laughs> you should drop it in very quietly throughout the uh, whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, make, make people think they're going mad. <laughs> so the next Alex Kid game was a Japanese exclusive, which I have only ever played in an emulator, and unfortunately, does not work very well in an emulator. Yeah, reading from the name of it, uh, Alex Kidd BMX Trials, I'm guessing mm-hmm. you are on a BMX bike riding through stages. Oh, I see why people say you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Top of your class. Um, yeah, it's it. it looks like it's an interesting little BMX game. However, it was played using an exclusive peripheral. It was like a little, um, I believe it was like a paddle or a ball that you okay. rotated to steer where you were pedaling. Oh. So using a normal controller, it just Didn't doesn't really work. work. You always keep pulling to the left, it seems, at least in the emulator I played in. I don't think people in the West missed an awful lot. I don't think if they brought this to the US or Europe that it would have changed the fortunes of Alex Kid series. But it's a bit of an oddity, to be honest. It's a something different. Yeah, and from what I tell, it's a short game. There's not a lot of content to it, but it's not necessarily a bad game if you've got the original control method to play with. Again, was it a side-scrolling stage no, platform? No, it was a, a top-down. It was a racing game. So oh, you, okay. like a dirt BMX going over All rounds right. and jumps, dodging lakes and puddles and obstacles. That's a very big change going from platformers to this yes this is something you'll notice with alex kid he has absolutely no direction in the games no consistency yeah there's just no consistency or general direction for where the games go to and the game that really shows this is the next title which was alex kid in high tech world which was also released in 1987 okay now this game Kinda is a Western exclusive. Really quickly, have you ever heard of a game called Doki Doki Panic? No. Right. 
Have you ever heard of Super Mario Brothers 2 on the NES? Yes. Yes. So do you, do you know the connection between those two titles? No. Right. So in Japan, Super Mario Brothers 2 is a completely different game to what we got over here. Okay. So what Nintendo done is got a completely different game called Doki Doki Panic and just chucked Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Princess Toadstool in there. Yeah, Prince of Peach. So it's just a reskin of another game called Doki Doki Panic. Oh, okay. Because apparently the original Super Mario Bros. 2 was just more of the same game, but a lot harder. And you're like, oh no, it's too hard for those people in the US and Europe. Best change it to a completely different game that plays nothing like Mario. Okay. So they decided to change it for no reason, basically. Yeah. And I'm guessing Alex Kidd in High Tech World did the same. Exactly the same. Now, I'm absolutely going to murder this pronunciation. This is a rebranding of an existing game called Animatsu Himi. Yeah. I'm sure someone will let me know that I'm completely wrong. Maybe you don't pronounce T, maybe it's Animusu. I don't know. Your guess, go on, you have a go, because your guess is as good as mine for this one. Oh, I'm, I'm possibly going to say Animusu Himi, like you said, but yeah. don't pronounce a T. Maybe. I, I really don't know. And bear in mind, this was before games like announced what the title was called in the game, so I've never heard it said. <laughs> oh, it just shows the title. That's yeah, it. yeah, it just shows the title. So, anyway, this game, you are trying to get to the arcade. Now, I think High Tech World is probably a reference to the Sega arcades, which were called High Tech Lands. Okay. So... Basically, you're looking for a map, you're trying to get to the arcade, and you've got to roam around your house, do little puzzles. On paper, it sounds good. In practice, it's not. This game is almost impossible to die. However, the way you can die in the game are just completely random. What, so you could open a box, but like a round box, dead? Well, one part, in your house, there's some stairs. If you go down them, the stairs are broken, you fall down and die. What? How do you know says then? Well, you know once you've gone down them and you've died, never to go down them again. <laughs> okay. There's a couple of stages where it's like a platformer shooter, but they're really short. There's ninjas attacking you, but you can get through them within a matter of minutes. Game sounded like any ninjas, so that's good. Yeah, well, actually ninjas come back later on, but they're much better. <laughs> Another way you can die as well is you can lie to someone. And I think they chuck you in jail, if I remember right. Or you can buy too many hot dogs and eat them all and get stomach pains. <laughs> Basically, you become a bit bloated and just face off too much and die. <laughs> Pretty much. It wasn't a great game. No, it, it wasn't a good game. Um, it's not even as if the Japanese version, I don't think, was particularly well received either. I, I, don't, I don't know why they released this. In, in all fairness... I think by releasing a game like this actually done more harm to the Alex Kidd brand. Because it put people off wanting to play it. Now, so far, with the exception of the arcade game, all four of these titles have been either on the Sega Master System or the Sega Mark III, which is the Japanese Master System. Okay. However, after the launch of the Sega Mega Drive, they actually brought Alex the Kid across for his only 16-bit title which was Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle. So they didn't even release him on the Mass System or Mark III at all? Um, no, no, all the other games were released on the Mass System and the Mark III. I'm on about Enchanted Castle, though. They didn't oh, even no. bring this one onto him. This is exclusive to the... This is Sega's next-generation console, the Mega Drive. Okay. This was his big return. They're going back to the roots. The gameplay is very similar to how um, Alex Kidd in Miracle World played. Same sort of style... Uh, even bring back those god awful janking rock paper scissor battles. <laughs> absolutely hate. But yeah, it's it's it is, it's just off. It's just not right. The graphics, technically the better, but the art style I think is worse. Oh, as in it just wasn't as pretty. Yes. It. So some of the enemies in. Alex Kid and Miracle World. Can you can you name me two enemies that you remember that you fight throughout the game? Uh, the scorpion, frogs, the little rock things that go around. Yeah. Uh, the people that fire the cannons. The people that run with little spears. Yeah, I only asked for two. 
Yeah, well, I'm just saying I could name a few. Do they feel like they would all inhabit the same world as each other? Yes. Rock monsters, bats in caves, as you say, the guys with the cannons and the spears in the castle. Yeah, you'd think they'd all sort of, yeah. You think you start this game and your first enemy you encounter is a car. Just a random car chugging around dead slow back and forth. Does the car have a face or is it just like a, just a no, it's car? Just, just a car. Doesn't, doesn't seem to have a driver. It's just a, a very small car. Like you wouldn't be able to fit in it sort of size car. Uh, it's it's just random. Annoyingly as well in this, when you kill an enemy or break a block and it drops money, it drops, hits the floor and bounces off in a random direction. So you've got to chase oh. your money down as well. Okay. This was released for the Mega Drive anyway. This was supposed to be his big foray into 16-bit. Unfortunately, it ended up being his only 16-bit title. A game was just not well received. Yeah. And, and, oh my god, the Box art looks atrocious. Instead of being this little cute little big eared monkey boy type character, yeah, it, I don't know. He just looks like some sort of freckly ginger. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to explain it. <laughs> um, not very, not very good box art. Although in all fairness, Alex Kidd in Miracle World in the uh, US and Europe had terrible box art for a start. It looks like it's drawn by a child. They've not even got the colours right. He's blonde on the cover art. Oh, I've just looked at the box art, and what the heck have they done to him? Which box art have you looked at? Uh, the Sega Genesis Ice Kid in, in the Enchanted Castle one. Yeah. Um, he looks he he looks like he's a uh, teen go through puberty, if I'm honest. Yeah, and he doesn't look like he's doing a good job at going through it either. <laughs> no, he's it's kind of like having an issue trying to get through puberty for that one. Yeah, I could what imagine. What the it. heck? Hey, you guys! <laughs> Just, yeah, absolutely um, shocking those. Yeah, so unfortunately, this is. I, I actually own this game and I don't think I've played much more than like 10 minutes of it at a time. Well, you still got the game? Yeah, I've still got the. I actually got this game because someone I knew hated it so much when I got a Mega Drive. Gave me the game for nothing for free. <laughs> he just went, you can have this. <laughs> I don't want to take it, please. Yeah, I, I I played a little bit. Like, I, Alex Kidd, looking on the back, it was like, oh, this looks amazing. Like, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, which I played loads of. Played it and was like, ah, no. Presentation-wise, it's bad. I hate the sound on it as well. I absolutely hate the sound. It's terrible. Well, surely not all the games can be bad. Is there at least one that is a redeeming factor in the series? You asked this, you know the answer. (laughs) So, unfortunately, this was the last Alex Kidd title for 30 years. And it was Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. Yeah. Now, this game has one huge issue with it. It's too short. Oh, okay. Apart from that, this game was fantastic. Now, they went back and released this on the mass system. And this game got no sort of Japanese port at all. Oh, so was it... It had no Japanese release at all? No, no Japanese release at all. Wow. The earlier title we talked about before, Alex Kid High Tech World, kind of did but it was a different title same game but different title this didn't now this literally came out as alex kid was being replaced by sonic the hedgehog okay so it was kind of i guess maybe not intentionally ditch. but it was a bit of a i think it was more of a farewell than a last ditch attempt to make him popular okay so what they've done is i'm sure you've heard of the shinobi series by yes. sega so they basically smashed the two series together. The game starts off, Alex's girlfriend gets kidnapped, and you become a ninja <laughs> to go and rescue her, uh, as you do. You become a ninja, so yes. you're now a ninja monkey. Yeah, yeah, ninja monkey, I guess. This introduces a lot of the mechanics and the characters from the Shinobi series. So Okay, so it actually really integrates them very well, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I remember playing this not long after playing two Shinobi games on the Master System. The game just called Shinobi and another one called Cyber Shinobi. 
And as a kid, I was like, oh my God, that's from that game. And that's from that game. And like the idea of a crossover in my mind was just, it didn't exist. It was amazing. It was this no completely back unique then It didn't thing. exist though, did it? No, no. It weren't like today where you go, oh, look, there's Iron Man in yet another non-Iron Man movie or something. This is a really good game. You can do things like uh, cast magic. You can climb up poles. You can spin around them and launch yourself off them, which is kind of cool. One funny thing about this is one of the bosses is blatantly Mario. Oh, really? Yes. And basically, it looks like Mario's got his mustache. He's in like a samurai suit. And as you fight him and he's near death, he actually suddenly shrinks into a little tiny version of himself like Mario does when he's one hit away from <laughs> death. So even at the time, it was like, oh, it's Mario, loser. <laughs> um, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it was a good game. Um, this one I never actually owned, but one of my friends did. And it was great. It was just, I think you could complete it in about 45 minutes or so. Okay. It was the opposite from Miracle World, where it just yeah, but goes on forever. It's because it was e- is it because that like, it was easy in Miracle World, or well, the game was shorter? In all fairness, becoming a heart surgeon's easier than Miracle World was. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, I remember them being a challenge, but I don't remember it being challenging. I th- I think it was one of those games that was fairly easy. You know, if you if you had any sort of degree of skill you were going to get through it pretty easily yeah but then as i mentioned before it was 30 years until the next title came out which came out this year which was alex kid in miracle world dx yeah so at the end of it all we just got a remake of the very first game which i think it was a pretty good game i really i've really enjoyed it um yes i unfortunately haven't completed it, but that's not down to not trying. That's down <laughs> to complete sheer frustration. <laughs> I just, oh, yeah. You had to stop before you broke something. Yes. Like your controller. Yes, it the TV. <laughs> the amount of times I'm sat there and there was a scorpion running, running along the uh, floor and I ran towards the edge because I had to jump up and hit it. As I ran towards the edge to stop, my guy slid forwards and the scorpion ran and stopped, and because his claw came over the edge, hit me, kill me. Yeah. I um, wasn't even on the same level as it, and it managed to kill me. Yeah, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, it's it's not a very forgiving game, is it? <laughs> not at all. You miss jump, you miss time something, it, you are going to feel the consequences. Yeah, and it's one of these games, it's a one-hit kill. You have no health. Yeah. So one hit is one life. Let's talk about the earlier stages. How did you find the earlier stages? I don't think I felt I found them too bad. Saying that, I did get game over in the first stage. So <laughs> that enough. explains a lot. <laughs> but I think it's more because this game requires a lot of patience and a lot of time and a lot of waiting. I probably sometimes didn't have that patience. I was like, let's go. So I'm there trying to like hop through, jump over, thinking, oh yeah, react to me. But I feel like the reaction wasn't as quick as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So I'm there tapping A to jump quickly or pressing X to hit quickly. And the reaction wasn't there. So that's how I was dying. I'm like, shoot, come on, speed up. I need to slow down for the game. Um, because obviously it is a remake of the Mass System one. Mm-hmm. And it still had a lot of the same uh, mechanics and everything else. So that's the issue that I had with it. It was more, it, it was a me issue because I was trying to go faster than the game could really go with me. Yeah. Now, one thing I will give the remake, for better or worse, it has got the feeling of the original game. So the momentum that Alex has as you're trying to move him. But unfortunately, it feels like every stage in the game is an ice stage. Yes. Because you just slide. You never stop where you want to stop. No, you don't land and stop. You have a little slide, which so often does mess you up. Yeah, in some of the later stages where you've got a single block to land on, as soon as I see it, I can feel my heart rate and my blood pressure going up. In the mission that I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to do the, uh, it was actually the mission to fight the last boss. I'm going across it and there's a few parts where, again, you have to jump in single blocks. And I'm there going, oh, this is where I lost life last time. Oh, I made it. 
Oh, this is where I lost life last time. Oh, I made it. And I'm actually, actually really happy that I made it. Um, and obviously with me getting so many game overs, so many dies so much, it, not just on that level, in the, mm. any levels, I got to a point where I was doing it so quickly that I could time it really well. Because, you know, when you get to different screens and different parts of it, you know, the monsters that don't activate until you're at a certain part. Yeah. So I was able to time and get through really quickly because I've done so much. <laughs> I've done it so much over and over and over again. When I started playing this, I was like, this is actually a bit more difficult than I remember. And I thought, maybe I'm just getting older. I've not played this game in 25, 30 years, properly at least. I thought, maybe I'm, I'm just not as good as I used to be, Harry. And I actually did have another go of it on the math system. Oh, okay. And I did have one benefit that I never really thought about. Because we live in the UK, we run on the PAL system, which is 50 hertz. Whereas all these modern versions are all 60 hertz. So originally, when I played it on the mass system, it was actually running about 18 or so percent slower. Okay, so it gave you the chance. So it made his jumps feel a lot more floaty. Yeah, I got... Well, I essentially got 20% extra time nearly to adjust okay. for jumps. Although, in all fairness, I did have to use a really bad D-pad on the mass system. Okay. Uh, to give you an idea, if you've not seen the mass system D-pad, it's a square. So, yes. modern D-pads are usually plus shape, but the new ones are circular. Yeah, the mass system was a square is this square but then it's got a little bit raised for the directions yes. yeah but if you want to do a diagonal no, you, you have to move further than if you want to just go straight up or left and right that's one thing that i did do when i started to play it at first i know i was using the thumbstick and then i very soon went to a d-pad oh no as soon as the game's 2d it's straight to a d-pad there's a very 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 few games 2d platformers at least where I'll ever use the analog stick. Just going completely off topic, that's why uh, Smash Brothers annoys me so much, because it forces you to use the analog stick. <laughs> it, I thought the game's a fantastic game. I really enjoyed it. I have really enjoyed playing it, and I will keep going to complete this game. I will not let it defeat me. <laughs> I, I am determined to not let it defeat me. From some of the ways you've reacted when I've gone, oh, how are we getting on with Alex, kid? Your response is, you seem like a broken man. I think this game has already defeated you. I thought, in all all fairness, the immortal. That was irritating (laughs) because it's so stupid he died. This is irritating because, uh, same thing actually. You know, this game, I don't know about you, the remake I think looks fantastic. I think they've done a really, really good job. I love the new graphics. It is absolutely amazing. The sounds and everything. The amount of times throughout the stage, I will flick between the different styles. You know, I'll go back yeah. to the original and go to this one. And it's absolutely amazing. I, I like. I, I can't fault it at all. I think they've done such a good job. Yeah. And it is a great game. I think it's just more frustrating the way that you die sometimes. The paper head guy i think where he's the one where someone's lightning coming down yes and i know i'm standing between i know i can see i'm standing between the clouds are and i'm getting hit do you want me to tell you how i managed to beat him you switched to the other graphics i switched to the other graphics and it was <laughs> absolutely fine i did not get hit once i went in fought him one straight away not a single issue the entire time i did the older graphics yeah just off me over that's something about the new version i think the boss battles in the last half of the game, when you're not just doing rock, paper, scissors, I think those boss battles are a lot harder. You were saying that, anyway. I actually got a game over near the beginning. Do you remember the first boss? It's like a, a pig or a boar. Oh, yeah, that charges across, hits Yes, you. mass system version. You just stand there. It runs out, you punch it, and it backs up and then charges at you again. So you, all you need to do is just make sure you punch at the right time to hit it as it runs at you. Well, it started running at me, so I punched. And it killed me. I was like, what? what's going on here? Did I... And I thought, I must have mistimed it. Went back in, done it again. It killed me. Right. Okay. Went in, but thought I'll switch like you did. Switch to the old graphics to make sure that I am hitting the timing right. Killed me. I was like, what's going on? So I had to replay <laughs> through the level. Got to it. Jumped over it. 
it hits a wall, stuns itself, then you've got to hit it. So because they changed up the boss, and I didn't expect them to, because essentially everything else had been the same up until that point. Yeah. Uh, I ended up getting a game over on a stupid, easily beatable boss. It was such an easy boss, but I think that's why I had a benefit for that one at least. Yeah. Because I didn't play the game, I thought, oh shoot, this thing's running towards me, I'm going to jump over it, and I didn't get <laughs> No, no, it, the, the Mass System version, you just keep punching. Because I hadn't done fought the boss for. I knew, well, sorry, in my head, I thought, I got to jump. With the new graphics, though, at certain parts, they put extra detail in, like the foreground, which looks nice and all, but there's some parts where the foreground detail covers pools of lava. Yes, you were saying, I don't remember that. I think it's like the second or third level. I was walking along, and it's only because, again, I knew they were there that I decided to switch graphics and saw that it was right in front of me, but I couldn't see it because there was a bush in the foreground that covered it up. So I don't know if perhaps they just didn't put much thought into where to put them or, you know, it's they just got, oh, yeah, just stick them like every 5% of the way through the level as foreground detail. And they just didn't think how much it would match up with the pits. Yeah, some of it's just badly positioned like that. One thing that frustrated me when I first came across them because I didn't think they'd hit me was the spear guys running around I oh, jumped yeah, across thinking were. oh I can punch this guy jumped across went to punch him hit me I'm like have I done the wrong again same as what you thought I was like did I mistime it again jumped across went, jumped across went to punch hit me again I was like for fuck's sake no yeah they, you've got to hit him from behind haven't you but then I forget to part of the mission I'm like alright let's go hit him go to hit him I'm like, for flip's sake <laughs> Yeah, I'd done that a lot for, oh, I can easily hit him. Hit him. And I was like, oh, no, you, you just can't get them from the front. And I think, I think there's so much habit, you'd be able to go hit him from the front to then not do it. You're like, oh, flip sake, no, I can't do that. Um, that's not a fault with the game at all. Again, it's just the way the game's done. It's definitely a product of its time. And the remake sticks to it very closely for better and for worse. Well, like you said, I know... You were saying they changed up some of the bosses' fights, at least. Yes. In all fairness, I think that's for the better again. You know, rather than better cheese the bosses, because you were saying that a few of the bosses you could just cheese well, quite easily. Not necessarily cheese; they were just easy. Yeah. Um. Again, going straight back to that one of the ball, you just stood there and just had to hit punch. I think if you were quick enough, you could just keep hitting punch, so that you just got it every time it came next to you. It's nice to see Alex Kidd coming back. I would like to see him in a new game, though. Something, yeah, something separate. A proper new game. I would like to see a new original Miracle World 2 where they do make it more modern. Yeah. So they don't have to change it massively. I don't mind the one-hit deaths, but for I do. God's sake, give him some grips on his shoes. <laughs> you know, just just make it a little bit... Because the other thing we were talking about before is when you're trying to jump into one blocks and as you try and jump, you thought, oh, I'm going to overshoot this. You then turn back. As you turn back, you land and slip off the other side. Yeah, the, the amount of times I've done that, I've jumped onto a block, gone to correct myself and ran off the opposite side. You were telling me about a point where you were trying to jump over flames, was it? Yes. And again, it's unfortunately, it's, the control isn't any good for precise platforming. Not at all. That's the thing. One slight longer press, a fraction of a second, you're going off. You're going in. Don't get me wrong. Able to do it, able to get past, but it's so frustrating when you do slide off, you do go there further, you do run backwards. Which is most of the time. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Oh, my other thing is, is quite often you punch one of the question marks and the ghosting guy comes out and you're like, oh, crud, he tried to run away. You hit him, blocked, hit the things, and then you get hit by him and you die. Yeah. I, I remember as a, um, like when I first played the game. Do you know at the end of the first stage when you're in the water? Yes. I remember going, oh, a couple of blocks, got the money, question mark block, hit it, and the little ghost came out. And I could see the food to finish the stage, but it was behind some blocks. And I'm frantically trying to swim up to it to punch it to get the food. And the <laughs> ghost got me. So I was so close to the end of the stage. And uh, I died one of the first times that I actually played it. 
Actually, an, a little thing about Alex Kid. So in Japan, in Miracle World, when you complete the stage, it has like um, and I think it's called an origiri. It's like a rice cake. Okay. However, when they brought that over to the West and they made it as the packing game for the mass system, they thought, oh no, Spe- Am- Americans and Westerners, they won't want to eat rice. Let's make him eat a hamburger. Oh, really? Yeah, so he eats a hamburger in the uh, built in version on the mass system. Saying that, I found a chicken dish in a block uh, today. A chicken dish? I broke a block, as I did. It was a cooked chicken on a dish. Oh, right. I've not spotted that, but I know in this, you can actually change what he eats. I think there was a origiri. There's fish and chips, which is what I selected. (laughs) Um, A hamburger or beef burger or cheeseburger or whatever it is. Or a Spanish omelette. All right. Maybe they've added some more in since I played it a couple of weeks ago. I thought that was a nice little touch. Although, in all fairness, the fish and chips um, icon in the old style graphics just looks absolutely appalling. It's basically a white triangle with like two little yellow things sticking out the top. <laughs> it looks like it's some sort of placeholder that they never actually got around to actually fixing. Yeah, no, it was very weird. So I've, I found the chicken thing. I actually found it uh, four times because my times I died and kept going back. Same block. So this wasn't to finish the... No. It was, you know, on the mission where the guys, you've come across the guys with spears and cannons. Yeah, when you're outside the castle, is it? Yes. There's a guy that's throwing rocks around. Um, and at one point, there is um, a question. It's the first question mark box you come to. As you go up, you break one, not one of the question mark box. There's some, there's like two boxes and two blocks above it. You break one of those uh, brick block boxes and it shows a chicken dish there no I, I actually can't remember that yeah. so unless I just I, that, like, I, I don't even this? know what it would do I did. I ate it and did nothing that's far as I was I don't, I, you know, I didn't even check if it went into my item bit yeah because oh, then I died after that that's something as well playing on the mass system do you know to get into your inventory to select an item oh yeah you had to actually get up and press the pause button on the mass system console I remember you saying actually yeah Back in the day when you only had two buttons on your controller. Yeah, but isn't that where you sit so close you use your foot? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I used to do. Just make sure you don't kick it or anything and the cartridge comes out and it crushes the game. On the mass system, would you have to complete the game in one city or not turn it off because you couldn't save your yes, progress? Yes, there, there was no save. I, I believe there was a cheat for continues, but I could never get it working. Oh, Okay. So when you get a game over screen, apparently you could press something on the controller or on a second controller and it'd give you a continue. But I never, ever got that working. So as soon as I got game over, it was that was it. Turn it off. Maybe stomp around a little bit, have a little cry, say, I'm never play. playing this again, and then put it back on and have another go. <laughs> put yourself through it. That was me playing it the other week. <laughs> okay. It's nice to see Alex Kidd come back yeah again i would like to see it as a a new title though i would love to see a new modern take on alex kid uh, especially with those graphics those graphics i thought were amazing yes absolutely they did a fantastic job except the sprite for fish and chips that was garbage <laughs> and the uh foliage in the front in the foreground hiding the pits oh that was just bad level design they look nice they were just lethal but yeah, I, I was really impressed with the game. Uh, if I'm honest, I'm glad I played it. I did really enjoy it. Uh, I think it was a really good choice um, for this game to play. And again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, as much as it did frustrate me, you know, not going to lie, it frustrated me, but I still thought it was a really good game. I still enjoyed it. So, go on. If you had to give it a score out of 10, what would you give it? 8.5, but that's because the amount of frustration it gave me. I think if there is one word that sums up the game, it is the word frustrating. (laughs) Yes, very much so. I think if I was to score it, I'd give it probably probably a seven. Okay. I'd say it's good, but it again, it's definitely of its time. And because it follows the original game almost exactly. In fact, once you complete the game, it does unlock 
a recreation of the original Mass System game. Yes, I did see that. It, you could get unlock classic mode. Yeah, I didn't actually play far enough through to see if they changed the bosses back to how they were, but I think they did. The screens even in four three, it gives you the original title screen and everything. <laughs> what do you, do? You, there's no continues either. Oh, I, again, I I literally played the first stage and thought oh, I'm not putting myself okay. through this, but. <laughs> It's a good game. Um, anyone who enjoyed the original should definitely go and get it. But I don't think it's got a lot to offer modern audiences. If you're under the age of 30, I don't think this has got anything to offer you, to be honest. No, but if you like uh, 2D platformers, then up your street. Yeah. I reckon everyone should have to play this game. And instead of saying that hard games are the... I don't know, say it's a hard platform instead of going, oh, this is the Dark Souls of platforming. It should be, this is the miracle world of platforming. Yeah. This is the miracle world of anything. Phil didn't get around to playing the game. He did play it, but I think it broke him. And I think oh, okay. if he'd carried on playing it, I think it probably would have broken his controller too. What do you think would have broken it? What do you think's broken him more though? The Immortal or Alex Kidd? <sighs> To me, I think I really enjoyed it. It's going to sound really weird. I really enjoyed it, but I think Alex Kidd is what frustrated me more than the Immortal. Yeah. If See, I'm going to be honest. Alex Kidd is, I say, it's not the best game, but it's a good game. And I felt like I wanted to carry on playing to get further. The Immortal, I just lost the will to live. <laughs> I'm not being funny. We're nearly 40 episodes in and we're still <laughs> all over the Immortal. <laughs> that is true. Alex Kidd, it's a difficult game. I felt that when I died in Alex Kidd, it was for one or two reasons. Either it was my fault or it's because it was too damn slippery. They were the only yeah. two reasons I ever died. <laughs> the Immortal, it was like, oh, what's that? You moved, you're dead. Oh, what's that? You didn't move, you're still dead. Oh, what's that? You started the game, yeah, you're dead. The Immortal was just unfair. Alex Kidd, it's difficult. But it's it's doable without losing the will to live. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. If you're looking for a challenge, if you're looking for something to sink your teeth into and you want to give it a go, I'm not going to lie, it is a pretty decent game. Yeah. I think, what, it's like 15 quid on the marketplace? Well, in all fairness, I, I paid, I think it was about 50 quid for the but physical. You got the, the, sorry, the yeah. digital edition. On the Xbox Marquez, I don't know what's on the PlayStation. It's like fourteen ninety nine. It's so. twenty two quid physical as well if you just want the standard edition. So it's not an expensive game. Yeah. So if I'm going to completely honest, I don't think you're going to lose. I bought it in the Xbox, and I'm not disappointed. I have enjoyed it, and I seem to go through and get all the achievements. Uh, all the achievements. You really want to get hundred percent in this game. No, not this one, because I, I know there's even, one. You've not even managed to complete it yet, let alone 100%. I'm it. there, don't give me that. <laughs> what I would say, though, is there is an option for infinite lives, isn't there? Yes. Now, I couldn't get this to work. Every time I turned it on, I'd go back in, it was turned off. So, I, again, there might have been an update. You said there was uh, a level select had been added. So yeah, they've just added a level select. They updated yeah. the game. You didn't see it last time. So, Maybe, if you're interested in it, there should be an easier way to play the game through if you just want to experience the game rather than... You don't get achievements, though. It turns achievements off if you do it. Right, you don't get achievements. Right. But it's still an option if you just want to experience yeah. the game. Oh, 100%. Overall, you think it was a fairly positive, if frustrating experience for you. Oh, yeah, I like said, it. games that frustrate you but makes you want to carry on playing, makes me enjoy it more, if that's weird. Like... I enjoyed it, even if it was I was, yeah. Well, even though even if it was me, I still enjoyed it, and I still wanted to go back and play it. And when you sent the link for the podcast, I was like, oh, "Darn it! I just want to try and get this done." I was like, "I want to keep playing because I've really been trying to get it done." But yeah, in all fairness, at least you was playing it right up to the wire, trying to complete it. Um, in the past, there's been some games that at least one of us is not completed just because. Because we don't like it, to be honest. Yeah. I actually hated myself enough to actually complete it twice. Yeah, that's your fault. I, I played the Mass System version emulated first, and then went and played the new DX remake. So, obviously, Alex Kid in Miracle World was our uh, last 
game we played, which, which was a suggestion put to us. We've actually had another suggestion put forward to us uh, for another retro game to play for October called Zombies Ate My Neighbours. This looks quite interesting. It's a top-down... Um, is it a twin-stick shooter? Um, I don't think it's twin-stick shooter. This is a game I've seen, but I've never actually played. So it reminds me a lot of Chaos Engine. So it looks like, you, from what I can tell, you explore around, you've got to save the humans from the zombies. Now, I think it looks quite interesting. It's something different, definitely. It's the first horror game of the series. Well, yeah, we were going to do a horror game, you know, with Halloween, and we were going to be super original, do, oh, let's do Resident Evil. But no, no, I think this is a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a two. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's going to be a lot of fun. And also, it looks like it's a uh, two-player yeah, yeah. So, well, if it's two-player, what we can do is we can um, use Pie Packer and yeah. try the Bring Your Own Games on there. I'm sure Pie Packer will be more than happy to help us out there. <laughs> but they don't have any choice. No, that's it. We're going to do it anyway. Done. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I think that's it for this episode. So, um, we've done a whole episode on a failed game franchise that didn't make it past 1990. <laughs> But we still really enjoyed the game. Uh, yeah, we, we did. Yet it was frustrating. <laughs> so thanks for yeah. listening, and we'll see you in a fortnight. Take care.